Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 184 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. <laughs> my name is Barbara. I was going to say my name is Biatch, but I oh. didn't want to get bleeped out so early in the podcast. What's up? Well, happy October, Barb. How are you? Wow. <laughs> I'm good. I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. I can't wait. Not only do we eat a candy, but we get to dress up like anything we want to. Oh, that's right. Your lab goes all out for Halloween, doesn't it? I go all out for Halloween. I yeah, you do. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, I just love the season. I love being able to run in the middle of the day and it not be 98 degrees. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually, it feels kind of fallish out here at night dental when I go outside to chill for a minute and get out of here. It's a little bit of wind. It feels like the temperature, less humidity. So I'm feeling it. Yay. Are the palm tree leaves changing color? No. Giving you that fall no, feeling? No, nothing changes color here. <laughs> nope. Not even the alligators? The alligators put on sweaters? No. What's going on? <laughs> nope. This month brings a lot of in-person shows hitting our industry. I know. Which is awesome because we went so long without them. It's so great that they're back. So the first one up is something that the podcast will not be at. And I don't think you or I are going to go. But it's something we have to mention because we encourage all dental technicians to check it out. That is the National Denturist Annual Conference being held October 13th to the 15th at the Orleans Hotel in Las Vegas. Mm. Why is it not called the New Orleans? I don't know. I was thinking that. I thought you were going to say New Orleans. I was going to. It It was hard for me not to. But yeah. The Orleans Hotel in Las Vegas. So we've had a ton of Denturis guests on this podcast and always think it's a great way for technicians to grow their career. And it looks like a great lineup. So head over to nationaldenturis.com to register. And then we've got Lab Day East, and that's in Philadelphia on October 23rd. Unfortunately, the podcast won't be there, but Preet wanted to send their best employee to the show, dun, dun, dun. And since they were not available, I guess Elvis gets to step up. <laughs> or if you are going to Lab Day East, make sure you stop by all the vendors and show them some love for making the event happen. Also, stop by the Preet booths and say hi to Elvis. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. Come and see me. But yeah, visit those vendors. That's what makes these shows happen. Right on. And if you listened to last week's episode, you already know everything about the Whitmix digital form. You actually probably know more than you wanted to know about the Whitmix yeah. digital form. That's happening in Louisville, Kentucky, October 29th and 30th. Now, this is where both Barb and I will be there recording the podcast. How long has it been since we've done this? I'd say a year and a half. Was it Lab Day 2020 was the last time? I think so. Or it was um, an ADL. I hate to tell you, but I put on a lot of weight and no, I'm just kidding. I've lost weight, so there you have it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Nice. But we will both be there recording the podcast. So make sure you register for this must-attend event at witmix.com forward slash events. And to hear all about it, just listen to last week's episode 183. So this week, we address one of the biggest issues facing our industry today, finding and hiring technicians. Lately, I've been traveling to many labs these last few months, and almost everybody asks me if I know any good technicians. I can be four states over and people ask me if I know technicians. It's insane. But the conversation is also for technicians looking for good labs to work at. It works both ways. So we introduce Andy Foster to this week's episode. Andy is a one-person dental technician just outside of London in the UK. Over the years, Andy has built up a network of technicians and labs and has sort of become a headhunter for the industry. He now runs a website called RecruitForTechnicians.com. That's Recruit, the number four, Technicians.com, that help good labs find good technicians. It also helps good technicians find good labs. It's a win-win for everyone. We talk about wages, location, marketing, and all the problems with our employment issues. So join us as we shed some light on it with Andy Foster. 
Whitmix adds Veracast OS burnout resin to its growing family of print resins. Veracast OS prints detailed crowns, bridges, substructures, and RPD frameworks accurately, smoothly, it's durable, and burns out cleanly. Margins fit precisely for easy finishing after casting or pressing, and its red color makes it super easy to see the detail. Technicians like that the printed pieces are robust enough to handle while fitting, sprueing, and finishing the workflow. Not sure if it'll work with your printer? Don't worry. Veracast OS Resin is versatile. It works with LCD and DLP printers in both the 385NM and the 405NM wavelengths. For optimal results, use the Whitmix Resin Vest which is a phosphate investment made specifically for burning out printed or milled resin patterns. For more information, visit Whitmix.com. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. All right, we'd like to welcome to the podcast... A gentleman that's here helping the industry with technicians and labs finding each other, which we know is a hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. Joining us is Andy Foster, thank you for the easy name, from (laughs) England right outside of London. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good, Elvis. Thanks for inviting me on. Absolutely. I've seen you online. You post a lot of jobs. I do. For technicians. Guilty. Yeah. So I'd like to find out how you got into the business. I mean, are you even a recruiter? Is that the, is that the correct term? Um, okay. So first and foremost, I'm a, I'm a technician. Um, have been since 1990. All right. So what's that? 31 years? Nobody's counting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm counting. So, <laughs> I, I started in 1990 as a, as a, like a trainee, you know, like a um, school leaver. Mm-hmm. making models and opaquing and, and stuff like that and I stayed with that lab for about six years I think and just like I say just just models finding my feet like most people do in this yeah. game we all gotta start somewhere exactly that yeah so I stayed there for about six years and then that lab actually went belly up it uh, went bust so I left labs for a couple of years I actually went to work for Cavo for a little bit oh sure mm, nice yeah yeah I was actually believe it or not I was actually um, mending their they're hand pieces, like dental hand pieces for a little for a little while. Oh, yeah. And so I did that for a bit. And then the guy, some of the guys I was working with at, at that uh, original lab started out their own business. And they kind of talked me into doing the same. And bearing in mind, I, I, I was only an improver. Um, I don't know if that's what they call them in America as well, somebody who's not really the finished article. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I wasn't the thought. I, I, I really had no rights to be starting up my own lab. But they, they talked me into it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and they they rented me bench space in their place, and so I started up my own business. I was I think I was like twenty four, and you know they they kind of helped me out these these two guys where where I needed. Then it kind of started from there, and I've been I've been running my own little lab now since ninety eight. Oh, you still run it? Yeah, I still run it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what type of lab is it? Just fixed or? It's it's just Crown and Bridge. I'm just Crown and Bridge, and actually, you know, when I say lab, it's just me and my delivery driver. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's not like, you know, it's not a big lab. It's just yeah. just me. And I, I pretty much just concentrate on, on ceramics as much as I possibly can. Mm. Talking my language. Yeah, yeah. Where's your lab at? Actually, I'm based in a small uh, village called Aston Clinton, just outside. Um, it's, it's just outside London. I was trying to figure that out. Wow, really? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it out of your home? No, no. I've got a small unit. It's actually, it's actually just literally two miles up the road from where I live. So nice. It's, yeah, it's so, so convenient. It's unbelievable. If, if I wasn't so lazy, I could walk it, but <laughs> I, I can't be honest. <laughs> it's a long two miles. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. It's a busy road. I so walk me through your lab. So you're mostly ceramics. So how do you get everything done? <laughs> well, things have changed a lot in the last five years. I used to do a lot more work than I do now, um, partly because I'm a bit lazy um, <laughs> and, and, and partly because I used to do a lot of um, NHS work and mm-hmm. uh, that's like the cheaper work in the UK. Yeah. What's that mean? Yeah. NHS NHS work. It's ground and bridge work or, or dental work that, you know, removals work that's um, provided on the NHS. So patients can get it, can get work 
cheaper than they would if they, if they went privately. Uh, is that like Medicaid, Medicare over here in the U.S.? Possibly, but it's yeah. you know it's the cheap stuff, and, and, and the pay for NHS work is really it's crap. You know, it, yeah, labs that do NHS work they don't get paid well for it, and if you actually sit down and work out your costs and your time, you're not actually making a lot of profit on it. Sure. Like a okay. DSO is what I would say yeah. in America, Elvis. Yeah. yeah. DSO work. Ugh. So I, uh, I stopped doing that about five years ago and went fully private, which meant I could do a lot less work, but nicer make work. a lot more money. <laughs> make, yeah, make, make the same, if not more money, yeah. but putting in half the time. And actually it became more fun because I could actually spend more time on each crown and just make stuff look nice and actually enjoy it instead of rushing and working late mm-hmm. and working weekends. And it, it, so things changed massively, you know, for me about five years ago when I did that. It was a really good move. Did you decide to do that or was it kind of forced upon you by the NHS? You know what? Or? That's kind of where the recruitment comes in because <laughs> okay, the thing is a lot of my clients do NHS and private work and labs that do NHS and private often find it very tricky to just get rid of the NHS work and just go private because they worry they're going to lose lose their clients. Hmm. I imagine you also lose a lot of the bulk of your work too. Well, this is the worry. And this is why a lot of a lot of labs doing both struggle to get rid of because no one really enjoys doing the NHS work. It's, it's cheap. It's crap. And yeah, know, it's not good. But, you know, you don't want to say to your dentist, look, I'm not doing NHS anymore. Please just send me your private work. Yeah. Just in yeah. case I say, well, hold on, I don't want to use one lab for NHS and one for private. I just want to use one lab. So that's the worry. That's that's the concern that a lot of labs have. But this is where the recruitment comes in. On the side, I started doing a bit of recruitment, just a bit of headhunting for labs. I, I've got quite a big network uh, of technicians on social media and in the database. So I started doing a lot of that. And, and the income from that, weirdly, allowed me to take that risk to stop doing NHS work hmm. and, and just do private work. So, it, we, you know, it was less of a gamble for me because I had two incomes coming. Makes a lot of fun. So how did you fall into this? I mean, here you are working by yourself in your own lab, not hiring people, not looking yeah. for a job. Mm-hmm. What happened? How did this even come about? About seven or eight years ago, in my infinite wisdom, I had I had an idea to start a website that covered a lot of bases that you could buy and sell like lab equipment, had a job board, had articles, had all this stuff. And yeah. so I thought, okay, let's do this. So I, I did that. I built the website with the help of a developer and I was running that site for, for a short while. And, and it was, it was interesting when I, when I was running that site, it was always the job page that was the most popular. Hmm. And, you know, all the other stuff kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. And it's always the job board that, that was getting all the hits. Hmm. And I thought, well, you know, and, I, and I, was, I was spending all this time trying to write articles and do this and do that to get that to, to make that website work. And I just thought this is a waste of time because I was spending so much time doing it. Mm-hmm. So I, I finally got rid of the website and then just started doing a bit of headhunting instead. Because I could see there was obviously a, a clear need for employing technicians. So when you say headhunting, how do you, like, what does that look like? Do you contact labs or do labs contact you or do the technicians contact you or do you do, you do both? Labs contact me mm-hmm. saying, look, we're looking for a ceramist or a CAD CAM guy or whatever they're looking for. Mm-hmm. And then I go to my network, whether it be the database I've built up or um, I've got a really big network on social media of various groups and pages and whatnot all over the place. I just, yeah, I'll go and find those technicians. You know, and and it's not easy. It's not a case of oh, you know, look on the database. There's a ceramist. Pick him. He, you know, he'll do. Because you know, it's really hard trying to find technicians, as everyone knows. It's uh, I know. Yeah. So I kind of started doing that, and it was it was okay. And I was doing that for about five years, the the headhunting, the the recruiting. But after the pandemic, after lockdown finished last year, mm-hmm. the lab got really really busy. Oh yeah. To the point where I couldn't actually keep, you know, I, I couldn't commit to the headhunting like the same way I was before. Because the lab, I mean, over here, things just went crazy. Once lockdown finished, we've hit a real boom in the industry over here. I, I, I assume it's the same over there. Oh, yeah. 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 And lots of labs were approaching me saying, okay, we need, we need a ceramist, we need a removals person. And I, I couldn't commit the time fairly. I couldn't say, I was taking jobs on and saying, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. But I, I just couldn't put the time in. I just thought, well, this isn't fair. I can't. I can't really do this. Sure. So I, you know, I, I 
I, I just stopped, I had to stop that and just concentrate on my lab. But that's when I started what I'm doing now, which is my job board, my new job board called recruitfortechnicians.com. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a new job board, literally just for technicians, just for labs and labs that are, are looking to employ, basically visit the site, put their job on, pay a small fee, and it's essentially just advertising their jobs. Yeah, it's quite a simple um, little site, but it, it seems to be quite popular. <laughs> is it only your area or is it over here as well? No, the website is viewed all over the world. So um, yeah, absolutely the States, wow. um, UK, States, Canada, United Arab Emirates, Australia, I mean, all over because it, and it's largely to do with this network that I've been building up for years and years on social media. I run what, six, six uh, Facebook groups, all um, dedicated to, to dental technicians and recruitment, three Facebook pages, I mean, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, all over. I mean, it, Facebook alone, I think there's over 31,000 members and, and, and followers to the, to the pages and groups. So it's, it's wow. a big network. It's a big network. Yeah. I've, been, I've been slowly building it I didn't know there are that many technicians. <laughs> <laughs> this is worldwide, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this a while and slowly, and it keeps growing, you know, year on year, it just keeps getting bigger, which is great because that's, I, I really enjoy, I'm enjoying running this job board uh, a lot. It seems to be quite popular. So if I were to go to recruittechnicians.com and I was a technician looking for a job, mm. do I put my resume on the site? Do I contact you? How, how does that work? Well, the good thing is for, yeah, the technicians basically visit the site and it's completely free of charge for, for job seeking technicians to, for, mm. for technicians to, to use the site. So they can go on, they register, and then once they're registered, they can apply for jobs. They can, oh. they can save jobs to the dashboard. Uh, they can upload their resume. They can create job alerts, multiple job alerts. So say, let's say they, a technician wanted job alerts for ceramist vacancies in Minnesota or something. They can create a job alert for that, as well as New York, Los Angeles, wherever they want to create job alerts for. They can even set up job alerts for specific labs. So if they wanted to be alerted every time Aspen are, are recruiting for whatever position, they'll get alerted. And it'll come straight through to their inbox. Hmm. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. So the reason I'm asking is because my son right now, he's looking for a job and he's out, he goes on like Indeed and some of the local sites. Yeah. And there's only, you know, so many dental technicians, you know, that you can pull up and you can find. So hmm. it's, it's recruittechnicians.com. It's no, it's recruit for technicians.com. And the four is the number four. Oh, yeah. four. The number four. Yeah. So recruit cool. for technicians.com. No, tell your son to get, to get on there. It's free of charge to register. <laughs> I'm texting him as we're talking. <laughs> and then the number four technicians.com. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's all the labs that are recruiting on the site. There's a page where you can just check out every company that's recruiting. And you can go onto their page because every lab that recruits has their own uh, like profile page. Huh. So they can put all their stuff on, all their kind of about information. And yeah, it's, you know, and every, every job that goes on just gets shared throughout the entire network. Wow. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything really like it out there at the minute. I mean, I know obviously there's Indeed, but that, that covers everything. So generic yeah. roles and great. plumbers, electricians, you name it. Yeah. But there's not much out there that's really dedicated to technicians and labs, you know? The problem with posting on Indeed, because I used to do that a lot at the lab I was at, was you would get 80% of the applicants had nothing to do with our industry. Yeah. And yeah. they were just posting to everything. Does this kind of weed it out a little bit? I mean, because it's more specific? Yeah, we don't, we, yeah, it's, it's pretty much just technicians on, yeah. on, on the job board. Because my network is just technicians, you know, there's no reason for, you know, Joe Bloggs, the plumber, or to, to, to see or be aware of the site. Yeah. You know, that's the thing with Indeed and uh, Monster and all the others. They have everyone going there, which is great because they, they have huge amounts of people visiting the site. But yeah, but majority of them do you no good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd get all these applications where someone's last job was Uber, you know, and you're like, well, I'm not, you know, nothing against that. I'm just saying I'm not looking for that. And, and the other thing is like, I mean, this is just something I read. The thing is, you know, there's two kinds of job seekers. There's the active job seekers that are actively looking for work and mm -hmm. looking for vacancies. And then there's the passive job seekers. And I think only 30 something percent of, let's say, for, for example, technicians are active at every, any given point. So 
you put your job on it on Indeed or even my site, if you like, uh, you know, there's only 30% of the technicians that you're, you're aiming that ad at are going to see it because the other 70% are, are passive. They're not actually looking. And actually, they're the more valuable candidates. The passive ones? Yeah, because the, pa- the passive ones... The introverted ones. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the ones that aren't actually actively looking for work, you know. But, you know, if you dangle that carrot in front of their nose and actually see a vacancy that they quite like, then, you know, uh, that brings them into, into the equation as well. So they're not desperate looking for work. <laughs> exactly, exactly that. And it's often it's the, the active ones that bounce from lab to lab to lab. They yeah. can't actually stay within a role. And um, We know those employees. <laughs> I'm not um, tarring everyone with that brush, obviously, but it's, it's you know, it, it's a thing. All right. So you've, t- you've took me through the um, technicians finding it. So, all right. So I, I come from a really large lab in Florida and we're looking for technicians and we cannot find any. So how would a laboratory advertise on your site? Again, they visit the site. They, yep. they register an account. Um, which is, is free so to register. Thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Register as an employer. And then they, they visit the pricing page and look at which job job advertising package they like the look of and huh. just go through go through the system. It's quite it's quite quite a simple process. All right. But you know, I, it it's it's a good site, but it's not it's not the magic bullet. You know, it's still incredibly hard to find technicians. I don't think there is a, a solution. And, and it's sad, sad to say, yeah, it's, but that's just the way of it, unfortunately. Wow. What I try to do with the site is try and um, get, get labs, job adverts seen by as many technicians as I can, obviously in my mm. network, and, and just trying to get it out there as much as possible. Because I, I think one of the solutions to recruiting is to get your vacancy seen by as many technicians as possible. And I, I know that sounds obvious, but just put it on um, Indeed, let's say, for, for an example. Oh, you get buried. You know, it, yeah, because of the, the, the skill shortage, you, you've got to try everything, I think. Yeah. You know, I, I just think that's the situation we're in at the minute. It's, it's pretty dire. You know, in, in, the, in the UK and obviously the US, Canada, everywhere. It's sad, but, but there it is. We've got to try and do what we can do. Since you see so many jobs from different parts of the world, what are some differences you see? I mean, you know, our audience base is, you know, 85% in America probably. But mm. is pay difference huge in different countries? Do you see it, you know, higher in some areas than others? Um, it's hard to, yeah, I mean, obviously pay is different, but it's hard to really, without knowing how much, you know, let, let's say Dubai, for an example, they, they, they seem to pay quite well over there. Mm-hmm. But then I, I assume the cost of living is pretty high over there as well. For yeah. Me. So yeah. I, I guess it's all kind of relevant. You know, I tried to find out this week on one of the Facebook groups, not one of mine, what the the average salary was for a dental technician in, in the US. I think I saw that poll. God, <laughs> wish I hadn't put that on. <laughs> <laughs> got, got shot down by a few US technicians for that. <laughs> I was just trying to get a basic understanding of what, and, and I know I know location's a thing, and it, it's the same in the UK, you know, jobs in London pay more than they do in Leeds or whatever. Yeah. But, and I, I know that's a thing, and I know there's different levels of experience. It's the same everywhere. But I was just trying to get a basic understanding of what technicians see as a fair salary and what would encourage them to to look at vacancies and look at moving, moving jobs. And what did you find? What I found was that the the, the most between seventy five and hundred grand seemed to be seemed to be favourite. Damn, it's a comfortable living. <laughs> yeah, super comfortable. <laughs> so. Did you like, was that like for a ceramist or was that for a removable or was that? I purposely didn't make it okay. You know, really specific because I, I have done surveys like that before. And wow. uh, this is really just a very quick, let's just get a very vague ballpark of what technicians are looking for and what would make them jump ship, you know? Well, that's pretty damn good money, I must say. Then maybe there's something in that, you know? Yeah. And I think that one of the big problems is, and I hate saying this because a touchy point, but salary you know, it is the number one thing. It's the driver that, that, that makes people move and shift jobs. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I just think that's where labs need to be looking but I, at increasing salaries. But then I, I know it's not as simple as just saying that because we can't raise our a, lot, prices. a lot of labs <laughs> can't pay the salaries. But obviously, in order to pay these higher salaries, they need to be looking at increasing their prices to their clients. Yeah. 
I see labs post jobs on, you know, social media quite often as I'm scrolling through and you see people looking for experienced technicians for 18 to 25 dollars an hour. Yep. And then I saw one that was looking for a ceramist offering over $90,000 a year. And I was like, wow. And I'm sure they're in different parts of the country and, mm, you know, cost yeah. of living and everything. But I mean, mm. talk about a, a spectrum of pay. It's just kind of all over the place. It, it is all over the place. I mean, I have labs post for uh, prosthetics or removables technician mm-hmm. for, you know, twenty five to 35000 a year. And then literally the lab up the road is paying seventy to eighty grand a year. Wow, that's crazy. You know, and and you look at the one that's doing offering twenty five to thirty five, and you think, well, they're just not going to get anything. And I, you know, I know they're not because what would make a technician apply for that? Yeah, and this and this is you know this is the thing. It, like I said before, they they need a, a carrot dangled in front of their nose. But these days, when you're advertising a position, it's almost like you've got to sell that job to technicians because mm-hmm. you know it's an employee's market right now. Is you know. Technicians can pretty much work where they like because there's so many opportunities out there, so many labs looking. I think it's going to come down to whoever's offering the best best package. Or location. I mean, I know quite a few yeah. <laughs> technician friends I know online that have mm. moved quite far for mm. a lab job in, uh, you know, the Carolinas, <clears throat> Florida, uh, <laughs> you know, people are taking this opportunity because they can go get a job anywhere. Yeah, to change yeah, exactly. where they live. Yeah, location's a massive thing as well, and that's unfortunate because there's good labs in not great places too. Yeah. <laughs> Indianapolis. <laughs> to put it bluntly, you know. yeah, the labs in the less <laughs> desirable, less desirable places are are, are going to find it tougher for sure. Yeah, and you know, wow, I mean, what's the solution for that? Well, what I like, Andy, is that I think labs are actually looking at what you're promoting and possibly considering and realizing that they have to pay higher salaries. I think they do. There's no way that, you know, people are going to come to work. Technicians are coming to work for 35K a year anymore and that they've got to raise that. They've got to raise the bar. And I think you're probably helping, you know, send that message. It's it's, it's a sad situation because a lot of labs won't be able to afford the high salaries Mm -hmm. that are needed in order to find the, the staff. And, and it does come down to, you know, e- either the lab absorbs the cost of that remuneration and the salaries, mm-hmm. or they put the prices up to maintain their profit profit margins. Or maybe they're starting to realize and respect, you know, the skill and the levels that were coming to the party, and they were just trying to get it for a lower wage, and they can actually afford it, you know, but 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 don't, or don't realize that they need to. And so, you know. They're the lucky ones, I think, because if they can afford it, you know, they, yeah. they've got that option, which is yeah. which is great because I think they're going to need to use it. I mean, I, I also read somewhere that you know, labs or companies in general that are struggling to find staff need to be offering in the upper quartile, uh, so the top twenty five percent of what in salary terms of what their competitors are are, are offering, yeah. and anything below that, I think, you know, is going to be is going to be a problem. It's, it's got to be something that's going to make a technician sit up and, and take an interest. But you know, it's not all about salary. It, I think salary is the main driver, unfortunately. But, um, you know, it, technicians want a, a, a variety of things. You know, p- uh, career progression. You know, if a lab is offering a technician really good opportunities to pro- pro- uh, progress in their careers, I think that's really important too. Mm-hmm. Well, I think salary will get you in the door, but a lot of technicians are just looking for a good work environment. Yeah, very much you know, so. There's a lot of labs out there where, you know, part in the term is a shit show. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, when they, when they always, they want to leave for a reason, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's not like people are all about making more money. They usually have a reason they want to leave a lab. Four main things that employees look for in, in, in a company. Well, one is appreciation of their work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, employees are sort of appreciating them, however that looks. Monthly pizza party. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly that. <laughs> Fair pay, remuneration, obviously, we've covered that. Career progression, so opportunities to keep progressing in their career, not just doing the same thing week after week, year after year. Yep, you know, yep. So they can actually see that they're actually going somewhere. They're growing. Yeah, and actually having fun at work. Um, apparently, that's like a really big thing. You know, just when you're advertising for, for technicians or even have it on your careers page on your on, on, on your website, just to show 
you know, potential candidates that actually it's a fun place to work and it's quite, quite a big thing. Yeah, I think it's important for labs to showcase on their personal or business social media the technicians having fun at work. Yeah, because I would good. hope if someone's going to be looking for a job, they're going to check out that lab's Facebook page or something. They absolutely will. Yeah, totally. yeah. So if, they, if they're seeing that company's doing like, you know, uh, whether it be team building or, or or celebrating, you know, somebody's birthday or going out for a few drinks or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. That's cool stuff. So, yeah. And if, they, if the place they're currently working at is kind of boring and doesn't do that kind of stuff, then yeah. Back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, my dad used to take a cart and on Fridays he would load it with beer and go around and give everybody a beer. I know, God, I know we can't do that nowadays, <laughs> that cool. but we just used to have <laughs> so much fun and it was just so cool. That's I think hilarious. back cool. to those times. That it's is like, cool. So not like that. They did that at our lab too before I got there. Yeah. Beer cart Fridays. Yeah. Oh, and you were the boring one that stopped it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we could get sued for this, I know, but it was fun. <laughs> well, it's fun. So yeah, it is. It's cool. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of things that labs need to do to get the idea out there that they're a good place to work. That it's yeah. it's more than just pumping out units, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, you know, th things have to change. Things are changing, I think. I think the time is now for, for, for labs to be offering more to um, to technicians. Yeah, I, I agree. So far, since we've been on this podcast, I've texted my son. I forwarded <laughs> uh, the link to our HR department. I'm like, you know, it's just really cool to be able to talk to somebody that has this great idea and to be able to, on this podcast forum, get it out there more because I know Elvis... Um, knew about it, but I certainly didn't, and I and I think it's just genius. Do you know it's... another thing that's actually quite important? It's something called constant recruiting. So mm -hmm. um, can I explain it? Um, a bit like when you're marketing your company, you're constantly marketing company. Yeah, a constant recruitment, similar thing. You're constantly you're constantly recruiting, um, whether that be well, you know, on a job board like mine or or on your careers page on your website. You constantly got that message going out that you're allowed this recruiting and you're allowed that's looking to take on technicians and stuff. I think, you know, if, if you only start recruiting once somebody's left or once there's a gap in the workforce, it is, it's, it's basically too late. You're leaving it too late yep. because it can take three, four months to find somebody. Oh, yeah. So by, by constantly recruiting, even if, even if at the time you don't have any, you know, uh, you don't have a, a role, you just, you just constantly have something going out. So, so people are applying, they're sending in their, their resumes, and then you can keep those resumes on a database. And then when the time does come that you need somebody, you've got that to fall back on. And the whole recruitment process could be a lot quicker and a lot cheaper, if that makes absolutely. sense. No, absolutely it does. I mean, you should always be looking for good people. Yeah. I know some labs that would create the role if the right person showed up. Yeah, absolutely. And just shift people about maybe because that's, you know, that's another thing. Just um, if a position comes up for, I don't know, a ceramist and you've got a guy that's doing, still doing metal or something and, you know, if you could train him to do the ceramics and then bring in a school lever or whatever to, to do the metal or, you know, just shifting people about as well. I mean, that's a great solution, too. Yeah, I remember at our lab, we weren't looking for a CAD designer, but somebody showed up that already had experience. <laughs> Heck, yeah, we got him in the door because how often did that happen? You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you took advantage of it. I was reading an ask. There's a lab over here. It's Burns Dental Laboratory. Really good, respected dental lab. And he actually takes on trainees he actively looks for for kids that are like gamers you know mm, oh, yeah 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 yep. mm -hmm. because they got the, they got the hand eye coordination they got the the computer skills and they they make great cad cam technicians yep. which I think is really smart that's exactly what we've been looking for and I'll be honest I'm in uh, Tampa Florida mm. we've got like five or six positions open and we can't find anybody it's hard it's really it's, it's really been, hard it's been three four months um since we've been yeah. trying to fill them it, it's just I don't know yeah it is it's you know and like I say you know there is no magic bullet it's just a case of keep plugging away get the ad seen by as many people as possible put it as many places as you can because mm -hmm. you know I, I think our industry is pretty cool i think oh it's the coolest come on somebody for somebody coming in i mean you know when i started for the lab i started in it was a dusty crappy old lab <laughs> and uh it really was a dump you know well, but you look you go at some labs now and they are so cool you know, all the digital stuff the printers the scanners it's a completely different sort of game in a way 
Oh, um, absolutely. So for somebody coming in to seal that, all you know, all it takes is a decent salary as well. And yeah, you know, why wouldn't why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you come and uh, be a technician? Yeah, it's great work. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really satisfying. It's good for it's good for the person because you get to yeah. help so many people. Except for yesterday. <laughs> well, yeah, Barb, quit <laughs> dropping the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What happened? Oh, I dropped <laughs> a, a ten-unit uh, all zirconia layered, facially layered uh, bridge, and uh, dropped it on the floor when I was glazing it and broke it into many, many, oh, many no. pieces. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, that's that's soul destroying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they almost good. had a new position open up here at night. <laughs> <next door. laughs> Put my head on my That's bench so and I was like, oh my God, I need a, I need a cocktail. So <laughs> and I had one. I think I'd have just down tools and gone to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> yep. God. Oh, that's, that's horrid. So Andy, do you help labs write their post? No, I don't help them write. I mean, what I have got, I've got a really good article I, I, I wrote on, on writing a good, effective job advert. Mm-hmm. Um, and it basically highlights about 10 different things to put in your ad. Okay. And actually, if, if we can put that a link to it somewhere, that'd yes. be cool. Because it's like that too. Do you know no, what? For that, sure. is, that is so important. You get job ads. You get labs putting a job ad on, and it will just say "dental ceramist required" as, yeah. as the headline. You know, as, right. as the yeah. title. But then, you know, if you just jazz that up a little bit and put "rare opportunity for a talented ceramist in, in like an exclusive New York dental lab," and then if it's got a good salary, chuck that in there as well. But, you know, hmm. and that'll grab that'll grab the attention of of a technician more than just dental ceramics required, you know, because you got yeah. you got to grab their attention. Oh yeah, you got to sell it. Yeah, you yeah. you got to sell it. You absolutely have to sell it. Yeah, you know, there's there's things you need to be putting in your job ad, uh, in your in your job description, such as you know, you come a bit of a backstory about the company, let the candidates know more about the company. Super important not to just stick loads of bullet points in of like must have this, must have that, must oh, have the yeah. other. That's very popular. Because that, that is the one thing that's going to turn somebody away. Like, well, I can't do half that stuff, so I'm not applying for this. And yeah. you know what? That's so true. I'll tell. It really is. I'll, I'll mention my son again. So he's a ceramist. He can seat and contour. He can layer. And every single job, it either dumbs it down or makes it way too high, you know, where he doesn't even yeah. want to look at it because he doesn't think he can qualify. But yet I'm sitting there going, dude, you have no idea you know, laboratories are, are, you know, looking for people like you with these skills, but they're not yeah. specific enough to attract the technicians. So I completely agree. Yeah, totally. I mean, maybe like two or three of the two or three bullet points of the essential things, you know, the, the absolute essentials, like mm-hmm. must, must have ceramics experience or whatever, you know, but then the rest of it, sell the position, put good yeah. stuff in, good stuff that's going to make them think, oh, this is cool. I like this. I'm going to apply because it's just, just just getting them to apply is you know, hit that apply button and actually send their resume. That's what that's what we're looking for, you know. Well, I always like it when I look at a job post and it states like must have five years experience. So what? Everyone that did four is no good. <laughs> very yeah. very good point. I mean, you're really limiting yourself. You know, someone with three could be just as good as someone that's been doing it for ten years. Yeah, that's so, true. That's you know, point. you just don't know. Don't limit your post. Because some people will see that and be like, oh, I've only been doing this for four. Next. And yeah. you're going to miss. That's a really good point. Yeah. You, you're actually, you, you're turning people away from, from your position. And you, that's the opposite of what you want to be doing. You want to be drawing them in and really selling it and not just, not putting barriers to entry you know, in, their, in their way. What about the reverse? What about technicians submitting their resumes? Any tips we can work with them? What are the buzzwords, you know? Oh gosh! Again, I've got a, a good article on the. On the website. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what else? Actually, I, I, I probably really sound like I'm selling the site, but actually, no. This is what it's about. When candidates um, register, when technicians register to the site, we're actually teamed up with a, a company called Top Resume, mm-hmm. and Top Resume write really good resumes for for job seekers. So if somebody hasn't got a very good resume or if they're just not sure, if they just want to jazz it up and give it a refresh, they can submit their resume through us to Top Resume. And one of their experts will go through the resume, make suggestions, and actually, yeah, and, and actually help the, uh, the technician out. No fee, no charge. And yeah, it's just, it's just another, it's just a good perk for if, if somebody you know, needs to give their, their resume a bit of a refresh. Sure. Writing a resume that oh. sticks out is tough. Yeah. 
Agreed. You know, not yeah. that labs are getting a ton of resumes to have to, you know, really no. choose. <laughs> but I can't tell you because I was in a hiring role at the lab I was at. And I used to mm. get resumes and people would be like, just a simple list of things they did in their last lab. You know, poor mm. model. Well, great. Mm. You know, congratulations. Let's expand on that. Yeah. So obviously, presentation's key. You know, yeah. make the resume quite simple to read and just look good. No more than two A4 pages. If it just goes on and on, then chances are that yeah it's just gonna it could it could put the employer off somewhat yeah i don't want to um, read that but, much yeah <laughs> yeah understanding what you're applying for so if you're applying for a cad cam role you can dock you can you can dock to your resume a little bit tailor it for the role so it's going to be more attractive to to the employer and also you know i'll tell you what one thing I, one thing i realized when i was headhunting lab owners love nothing more than photos <laughs> really photos man that's the that's the one that's what i was about to ask what about like a portfolio of work yeah i mean i had guys that wouldn't even entertain uh, an application and this came with photos huh yeah they're so it's so important so and, and the good thing is right even if even if your work is kind of average i mean we've all we've all been on facebook and seen seen these like cool photos of people's work and and usually it's like the real top techs that do it oh sure yeah but just a bit of you know, creative photography can make an average piece of work look really cool, really good. And that, and that really, yeah, that really kind of jumps out to employers. Wow. I think that's key. Yeah, totally. You don't see it enough. People do work. I mean, removable technicians just showing rather than just writing that you can do it. Mm. Show a picture of it. You yeah. know, I wouldn't even be impressed to see a video. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, some, you know, I used to get, I used to get some guys that would really put together some cool stuff to send on to employers. They send it to me and, you know, they, they really put the effort in to make, to, to sell themselves and, and make themselves look really, look really good technicians. Even if some of them were, you know, awesome technicians, but some were kind of average, but they looked so good just because what they put together. It's all about lighting and the camera. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, but even just, you know, some would have like a web page just, just for themselves. And it'd be the, one of these like a uh, one page web pages. So you just scroll down, 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 and they just have all their stuff and a little description here and um, a little bit there. Yeah, it, it was just really well put together stuff. And I bet you they got those higher paying jobs. And and they, they they it definitely yeah. raised uh, it definitely got the intent, the attention of employers they they'd all be like yeah send him over or send yeah. her over or whatever I mean I always thought it was funny that when somebody was CAD CAM experience and we'd hire them in they could sit there and talk about it all day long but you really needed them to sit down and show you that they could do it yeah why not just create a simple video of you doing it and send it. You that's know, a really good idea. I mean, that's a really good idea. It's so easy to record what you're doing on your computer. If I could see you design a simple molar in just a few minutes, uh, you're going to get a job. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great idea. You know, you, you could um, you could get into recruitment. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, Elvis the recruiter. No, thank you. <laughs> start, start your own little video service. He's yeah, he's the smart one with all the ideas. Yeah, that's really cool. That's I'm great. just trying to help technicians out there get yeah. the best job they deserve. Yeah. Although to be fair, you know what? I mean, you said it yourself that you know, I think employers are just happy to see resumes. <laughs> so, oh it's, yeah, it's it's, it's definitely technicians market at the minute they, they can pick and choose what, what roles they want to some extent what's it like where you're at is everybody looking for a job is it pretty stable are labs you know lean over here it's exactly the same as it is in america i think yeah. labs are just because we've hit this boom period after the lockdown there's so much work not so much for the nhs labs they're kind of struggling mm -hmm. but for the private labs they just run off their feet and they're, they're, they're desperately trying to find technicians. Just the same as, as the US, I guess. Do you guys have schools in, in London or in England? Colleges. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have dental colleges. There's not that many now. But yeah, there, there are a few dotted about. But I don't think there's enough kids coming through, enough youngsters coming through. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. But then I, 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 mean, I, I honestly think if, you, if you've got a quite a savvy youngster who just doesn't have to have gone through a college and just train them up in the lab oh yeah i i never went to school my dad for he was like yep you're going into the lab here you go and yeah. uh been there ever since so yeah i i completely believe that if they got the right kind of skill sets and stuff you know like i was saying earlier you get somebody with good sort of hand-eye coordination or is quite canny on a computer yeah give them a go and just train them up because i know it's time consuming and you haven't got that instant kind of you haven't got the instant talent but yeah it's cheap 
and actually they, you can find some real hidden gems in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the hard part is finding the people that are willing to learn it, you know? That's always been a struggle when you bring in somebody that didn't already have lab experience. I know a guy who he brings in trainees who've never seen a dental lab and he'll, he'll put them on a really good wage mm -hmm. from the start. So instantly, you know, they're, they're kind of keen because they're getting paid good money. And, you know, they could, if they went to a job down the road doing something completely different, they probably wouldn't be getting that money. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're instantly keen, they, you know, uh, and it, it just seems to work for him. His staff retention is really good. He, he pays all of his technicians really well. He's just a guy that's doing it well. He's, he's doing it. He's doing it right, I think. But then he, you know, he charges really well for his work because he's, he's, he's one of the best. So it, all, it does all come down to salary, I think, unfortunately. Yeah. In America, you know, we're competing now with, you know, a new minimum wage that's popping up. Oh, really? What's that? Well, it's getting to be about $15, 15 an hour. Yeah, 15 It seems to, even if the government's not regulating it, a lot of large companies are saying, we're going to start everybody at 15 Yeah. God, I, I remember bringing in people at the lab less than that. And well, it's, it's it's hard to do. It's hard to compete. Yeah. Because why we have a great industry, it's mm. definitely not stress-free. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, sorry, a, a, min, a minimum wage. So, yeah. I mean, is, is I mean, $15 an hour, that, is, that doesn't sound too, too great. It's not. Um, it's horrible. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it used to be for years, what, $7.50, mm -hmm. you know? By no means really? am I a financial expert here, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me neither. It's, Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, and we've talked to other lab owners, and you know, on this podcast, and they talk about having to compete with the fast food place down the road. Oh, it's the same here. I mean, you yeah. get people leaving to go and be a delivery driver for some company doing this, that, and the other. You know, and it shouldn't be that way. You know, our industry should be paying more than the bloody supermarket. Oh yeah, up the road, you know. Absolutely. And somehow, some way, we need to fix that. <laughs> well, I think we are. I mean, I, th I think everybody's coming to the party. I've been to several meetings and we've brought up compensation and hourly compensation. And I think what's happening is the technicians are driving it because they're not coming for those monies and they're saying, I want more. And, yeah. you know, the lab owners have got to start listening and have got to start paying more. I mean, we, we definitely do. I mean, we've had to raise ours. We started at 12 and now we're starting at 15, just like you were saying, Elvis. But yeah, I think, you know, supply and demand is what's finding, you know, I, the labs are making a lot of money and they're paying people overtime, tons and tons of money in overtime. If they were to yeah. take that money and go ahead and hire a couple people and give them a decent wage, it all works out. So I just... No, oh, it's, it's definitely a changing dynamic at the company I'm at right now, and I'm happy about it. I think um, I was chatting to a lab owner the other day, and he came up with a problem he's having, is that he's looking for a ceramist, and he's advertised that the salary he's advertised is, I, don't know, I think it's about 40 or 50 grand a year. Mm -hmm. But he said to me, you know, we'll pay up to 60, maybe more. He goes, but I can't advertise that because my other guys will see the advert and say, well, oh, why aren't yeah. we on 60 grand a year? Yeah. And I thought, well, that's actually, that's, that's a good point. I and mean, that's another situation, uh, another problem labs probably have, especially the bigger labs. If they're, you know, if they're willing to pay really good money just to get that one really good removables tech or whatever coming in. But, you know, if they got 50 employees, <laughs> that's a lot of conversations they've got to have. So to, why, why those other employees aren't, aren't getting paid the same you know what you are so right and people get really pissed about that yeah that's a problem yeah i concur because that that happens here people that have been here for three years making 12 and then now we're starting to hire at 15 you know and all the people that are making 12 are coming up saying hey you know what about us and i completely agree with that and it is a problem surely those ones on 12 should be bumped up to 15 anyway yeah they, if the minimum wage is 15 yeah I would hope so. I don't know if they've, they've started that yet, Elvis. I don't think it's, no, that it's not a mandatory minimum wage yet. I God, don't get, don't, I don't know much about it. I would it. hope it would be though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are some people that say yes, yeah, some people that say no, but a lot of large companies have decided to, to do it because they know it's the way it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not get into politics, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably wise. Yeah. <laughs>
No, it's a, it's a tricky situation, but you know, you know, like I say, we, we haven't got all the answers at, at recruit for technicians, but just trying to be a cog in the wheel of, of, of trying to make it easier for technicians and for lab owners, you know? Yeah. I mean, Andy, I think what you did in putting this together, I think it's great. I mean, you're not the first technician job board, but you seem no. to have do it right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at your site. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of labs on here all over mm. the place. Mm. I notice a lot of them don't post salary. Do you know what? That's, oh my God, that's another thing. Okay. I did a, I did another another one of my little polls, one of my little surveys. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it, the survey basically asked the question, if a job description didn't include a salary or a salary range, would that deter you from applying for the role? And do you know what? 72% of technicians said that that would put them off from, from applying for the role. I agree. 70, 72%. I mean, instantly you're, you're, you're knocking three quarters of the, the target market out just by not putting a salary. Wow. And I get it because a lot of, I, I totally understand it because um, I ran into this a lot when I was recruiting and lab owners would say, look, we, we can't say we'll pay 50 grand because if the guy that walks up isn't worth 50 grand, you know, he's expecting 50 grand from this, yeah. this role. And, you know, we're only prepared to pay him 35 because that's all we think he's worth. And so they don't want to commit. And I totally understand that. And I think that is where you need to put a salary range from the starting, whatever it might be, 30 grand, to the absolute maximum that you're prepared to, to pay. Because that absolute maximum figure will be the one that they focus on think, oh, you know, even if I'm not worth that now, it could be in like two years, three years time. And actually, that's a really good salary. But what's the popular saying based upon experience or something? Yeah, people exactly, put that yeah. in their ads all the time. They do, and I, I do understand it, but it's exactly. it's, it's almost counterintuitive sometimes. Because are you basing an experience that I think it's worth, or are you basing what you think my experience is worth? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and let's face it, you know, you're the technicians there, there are the mediocre ones, there's crap ones, and there's awesome oh, sure. ones. And there's, there's all the ones in between. So, you know, it is a tough one, but you have to put something. You really do. Because if, if you don't put any salary, it really is the wrong, it's, it's, it's not going to help at all. You know, you'll just get even fewer people interested in the role, unfortunately. Wow. It's tough, you know? I mean, it is. It is. Labs it's looking tough. for people, people looking for good labs to work at. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's not easy. No, it's not easy at all. But Andy, we think you're doing good stuff, man. Yeah, thank thank you. you. I think every lab and every technician should go check out recruit the number four technicians.com. Just check <laughs> it out. Yeah, I'm just there. check it out. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you're not looking to leave your lab, you never know what's available. Exactly. You should always keep one eye open on the jobs, you know. Absolutely. Never what's... not look. Exactly. It's, 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 non, it's, it's not committing to anything. To just keep an eye, keep an eye on the market. Because you never know, there could be an awesome job just up the road that's, that's, that's better than your current one. Who knows? Or ding, one in ding, Tampa ding. near a yeah. beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, All of us landlocked people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just go on vacation during hurricane season. Mm -hmm. that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> well, Andy, thank you so much. This is a great topic that you know, we've not really covered on the podcast. And I think it's really interesting. I think you have some good perspective. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Again, thanks for inviting me on. I've, I've yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah, awesome. And Get the word uh, out. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's all about just strengthening our industry on yep. both ends for technicians and labs. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome, Andy. We appreciate it. You have yourself a great weekend. And you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Grow3x is a dental supply, service, and marketing company. It was founded by Norbert Ulmer, and their goal is to help dental labs, especially small labs, to lower their costs for supplies, to provide business opportunities, and help them generate growth. They really want to help labs as they know how difficult it can be competing with larger lab groups. One of the things that they have going on right now is their upcoming Grow3x Gem Talks. It's on November 5th in Charlotte, North Carolina. What is a Grow3x Gem Talks? 
Well, it's an all-day marketing symposium in a TED Talk style, featuring some 10-plus lab speakers as they share their most relevant and practical marketing techniques. We will hear from Sasha. <laughs> we will hear from Sasha from Harvest Dental, Ann Kelser from AMK Dental Lab, Frankie Acosta from AA Dental Design, and Ricky Braswell from Beyond Coaching and former co-executive director of the NADL. A few past podcast guests are on that list. All of them will talk about real marketing that is is done in their own labs and businesses every day. Register now at growth3x.com to take advantage of their early bird special of only $95. And if you enter the discount BFTB for Voices from the Bench, you'll receive an extra 10% discount just because you listen to this podcast. We can't wait to see you at Grow3x Gym Talks in Charlotte on November 5th. So guys, have you seen the high prices of precious metal these days? They are close to record highs on gold and palladium. We know that you are using less precious metals in your lab these days, but if you send in half of what you sent in five years ago, your scrap return will be higher than it was five years ago. Because of the high PM prices, you owe it to yourself to find a trusted, reputable refining company. Look no further. Colzer Refining has been tested, trusted, and reputable for over 100 years. They burn, melt, and assay all under one roof at their state-of-the-art refining facility in Wardburg, Tennessee. They have doubled their production capacity to ensure your scrap return within two weeks. They use an ICP for their essay technique with the fire essay method, if needed, as well. With all the non-precious material that has become present in today's restorations, it is important that we ensure the assay sample is homogenous. At Colzer, they take the extra step to x-ray the top and the bottom after they melt the bar to make sure the precious metal percentages are the same. If not, copper is added until they are positive and the bar is homogenous. They know that this step is very important to get a precise essay result. Their reimbursement to the customer is after their 10% refining fee. They have zero additional fees. If you need any free shipping containers, which contain a UPS prepaid, fully insured label, please visit mydental360.com forward slash refining or call the director of precious metal refining, our friend Tony Cercelli, directly at 914-906-1843. So collect those vacuum bags, floor sweeps, miscast and spills, and get the best scrap return in the industry with Colzar Refining. Tested, trusted, and honest. And we appreciate your support of the podcast, Colzar. A big thanks to Andy Foster for coming on a podcast. I really did love your accent and tackling one of the biggest problems facing our industry today. It's really hard finding good people, but you have to remember that it's just as hard for people to find good labs. We hope that both sides might have learned something from Andy's experiences. Make sure you check out his website, recruit the number four technicians.com. That's recruit with the number four technicians.com. And if you run a lab, list your positions. If you're a technician, get your resume on there. You never know what wonderful matches could be made. It's just kind of like a match or us. Two lovers could be <laughs> You never know what wonderful matches could be made. So thanks, Andy. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. No, but we can find you a reason. <laughs>